from the new System Control Center near Bali. I'm Mike McClure. Sharon Bennett is on special assignment this month. In this edition of NTV, we'll tour the new System Control Center and meet our new superintendent, Gary Zarker, who came on board earlier this month. But first, let's hear about the recent downtown power outage. On Friday night, October 28th at 9.07, city light crews were called into action as a fire broke out in a splicing hole at 3rd and Seneca in downtown Seattle. The fire was limited to the electrical equipment at that site and was out by 3.36 Saturday morning. Using an innovative strategy, crews restored full power by 4.15 Sunday afternoon. Yes, our crews uh, and network engineering thought of a way to reroute the primary cable between the Seattle Art Museum and the Gallant Building and uh, be able to run a temporary jumper or primary cable in, which allowed us to uh, end bell the damaged cable and uh, restore power about 24 hours sooner than originally scheduled. During the 43-hour outage, eight major downtown buildings and about 25 smaller shops and businesses lost power. About 60 other small buildings operated on reduced load. By mid-morning Saturday, three of the large buildings and most of the smaller shops and businesses had power. By Saturday evening, all street lights in the area were back on. The affected area was between Western and 4th Avenues and Union and Spring Streets. More than 100 City Light employees responded to the event, with many on around-the-clock schedules. Personal plans take a back seat in these situations, but at least one family didn't let it spoil a special celebration. Doug Smart's family just made alternative plans. Got kind of changed plans in the middle of uh, our anniversary there. Uh, it was supposed to be Sunday afternoon, and uh, we got called out Saturday, and I told my wife, well, you better put the babysitter on hold. Uh, and then, uh, she had some other plans that I didn't know about, so then uh, Sunday she came down here with uh, some balloons and candy and a corsage and kind of surprised me and brought the kids down here. And the kids are real excited to come down here and see all the commotion going on. And uh, I think I'll have to make it up to her a little bit later when we kind of wind things down here. Happy sixth anniversary to Doug and his wife Lori. NTV salutes all the employees who once again came through and restored power well ahead of expectations. Now let's meet our new superintendent, Gary Zarker. While winding up his tenure at the city engineering department, Gary took time to meet with City Light directors. He also met with a few other employees, Karen Ultral, Young Wynn, Norm Dodge, Shirley Ma, Rich Montemayor, and Mary Scott had a chance to get acquainted with Gary and ask questions. With the statement, Gary, I would like to ask a question. Uh, did you have all working levels of people in the decision making during this production <coughs> when you implemented the changes? In the reorganization, there were um, 200 and uh, nearly 300 people playing various roles in it. As we near the end of November, the combined charities campaign comes to a close. As usual, employees throughout the department put on and supported a variety of fundraising events. South Service Center employees had a donation bake-off and raffle, and of course, Energy Management held their always lively auction. Adding a personal touch to this year's campaign, department coordinator Marguerite Moore distributed a videotape recounting her past experiences with a number of the agencies that helped her and her family through some difficult times. I was uh, asked if I would do this. And it was very emotional for me because it was like a dream come true where now, finally, at last, I can return some of all the help that I've been uh, able to, to get from these organizations. And I think because of my, my experience uh, through the tragedies that I've uh, lived, that I was able to be totally dedicated. And that was when I made a conscious decision to share some of my life story with other people at City Light. Um, I feel a lot of times that when you're, you're looking out, it doesn't seem to matter as much as when you can see a person's face that you know has had something happen to them where they had to go to these agencies for help. We humanize the service. And I want to thank all the people who have participated in this year's combined charity event whether you've uh, bought raffle tickets or, or attended a function um, or went to an auction, 
If you've participated this year, it's great. If you're unable to participate this year, there's always next year. So there's always hope. Not only does November herald the holiday season, but also the flu season. City Light again offered flu shots to employees at their work locations. More than 400 employees took advantage of the service. Group Health administers the shots at a cost of $7 each, but employees paid only $3.50 with City Light picking up the rest. This year, for the first time, air guns were used instead of needles. Group Health says they're less painful, but the reviews from employees have been mixed. Last issue, we told you about a departure at the Skagit. This issue, the news from the Skagit is an arrival. Recently, a new workboat moorage was floated into place at Ross Powerhouse. The new concrete dock and boathouse replaces the old wooden boathouse. During the move, generation at Ross had to be shut down to make sure the water was calm. Everything went well. And now for a tour of the new system control center. Located across from City Lights Canal substation near Ballard, the System Control Center has a unique exterior designed to blend in with the mixed-use neighborhood. You'll notice on the one wall here we call our feature wall, being brick, uh, it was such a monstrous thing within the neighborhood, we wanted to make it something that would blend in and look good to the neighbors. And we've incorporated our 1% barrage in here. We have hand-cast tiles above along the top parapet. That's really and great. also did some design with the color of the brick and the notches in the wall to kind of break it up to make it look a little smaller. And that whole idea is carried out throughout the building. Uh, the neighbors here, residential neighborhood, didn't want some industrial building setting in their backyard or front yard, mm -hmm. depending on what side of the street you're on. Right. <laughs> and the Ballard Chamber of Commerce is proud of their industrial flavor of this area and didn't want to lose the industrial side of it. So what we've done is developed the north and east wall to be more of a commercial type uh, presentation. And on the south side of the building, we've made it look like an industrial building, kind of loading dock by putting awnings up along the top to kind of blend in with the substation and the mm -hmm. industrial side of the air neighborhood. So. The system control center is more than twice the size of the power control center because it will house twice as many employees. Station's operations occupies about half of the building. The other half of the building will be occupied by the power dispatchers and resource schedulers. Mike, we're here in the control room, and at this building we have a single control room where at the power control center at the present time we have two rooms where generation and transmission is one room and the distribution is in the other. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we originally were set up in the power control center before the remodel, and now we're back in one room, and this should help our safety and uh, training operations here. The mm -hmm. most noticeable feature in the room when you come in is the pin board. It's a mosaic tile board, and it represents our distribution, transmission, and generation system. Uh, it starts geographically in the south end, and you can follow it through to the north end of the system. And then you'll see the red and green, or red and blue lines, and that's our transmission grid. And at the far end is the generation. Uh, that's where we represent our Skagit projects and Boundary and uh, other small powerhouses. Mm -hmm. uh, you also notice that on the main floor there's four consoles. And each one of these has an area of responsibility, and the console's positioned right in front of that particular part of the pin board. You have uh, south distribution, north distribution, transmission, and generation. Another thing you'll notice about the room when you look around is there's acoustical tiling on the walls, and that is to cut down the sound. It's a much larger room, and it echoes quite a bit. These are our operating consoles, and they're set up with uh, three CRT screens for our EMS system, and we also have a multitasking communication system, which is a radio telephone console uh, combination. We also have our land computer for the office automation built into the console. Uh, you'll notice there's a fiberglass hood. Um, besides looking good, it also has a practical design. It's designed to take the cooling from the fans below and sweep it up over the computer components. Uh, so it's functional also. The console itself is ergonomically designed to reduce the amount of rolling around in the chairs the dispatchers have to, have to do. The offices on the back wall of the control room uh, 
are also covered with the acoustic panel, and it's matched on the second floor. Because on the second floor, we have a view room for the media, for guests, for tours, and being able to keep the media or guests up there, it keeps them away from the dispatcher where it interferes with their work. At the far end, we have a conference room that also has windows onto the dispatch floor. And the reason those windows are there is that that's also designed to work as a EOC for Seattle City Lights for emergency operations. This is a little different than the city EOC or our trouble center. It's where we headquarter for emergencies within the system like major substation fires or earthquakes or something along that line. On the floor we're on are the offices. We have our scheduling office, followed by our manager for generation and transmission, followed by the chief dispatcher who's in charge of the distribution dispatchers, and then followed by the outage dispatcher who handles all the clearances for the line crews and underground crews, station crews. And they're also located somewhere to the desk on the floor where they're kind of in front of the area of their responsibility. The scheduling office requires information off the generation board. Then each manager is sitting behind the people he manages and followed by the outage dispatcher where most of his work is within the transmission or distribution system. So he's located closer to the distribution section. It's our understanding that this is the first public building in Seattle built to meet 100% of the standards set forth by the Americans with Disabilities Act. To conserve energy, motion detectors automatically turn off lights when a room is vacated. Air conditioning is done with chilled water and the landscaping is drought resistant. When this project first started, we were going to just replace the SCADA system because of age. And with the help of a consultant, we identified enough technology within the new system that we're going to be able to save enough money or be more efficient in operation that it will pay for the system and the building, not just in our savings. Along with that, having the new system is much more secure. It's a distributed architecture on a LAN as opposed to an AB type computer. We have added backup for our communication systems in this new building. And overall, it's a much more secure system. On top of which, we now have the operators located with the dispatchers who are close together. And hopefully having them this close together will give us a training opportunity so we can recruit operators as dispatchers and have a better communication between the two groups. It looks like the system control center is well set for its mission. Thanks for the tour, Jack. You're welcome, Mike. Before we go, congratulations are in order for Betty Tobin, acting director of the Power System Construction and Maintenance Division. She recently won a performance award from the Seattle Management Association. Other City Light employees nominated for awards are Beth Blattenberger, Kerbal Skinnerland, and Dave Smith. Well, that's it for this edition of NTV. Our next edition will be out in January. From the System Control Center, I'm Mike McClure, wishing you happy holidays from the entire NTV staff. Bye-bye.